Hey, welcome back everybody. This is episode 12 of my Crafting Paradise Let's Play series. And first I wanted to apologize for the last episode. I noticed when editing that my mic seemed to have cut in and out and swallowed some words. And I'm hoping that I fixed it for this episode and on. Um, and some parts were hard to understand what I was trying to say. And I hope you guys figured out what I was saying. And okay, we're gonna go ahead and start upgrading this blood magic altar to the next level. I wanted to show you guys the automation that I set up to help making, you know, a lot of these slates. I haven't started on the reinforced slates yet. I back to the first, but in order to make this easier, um, I wanted to show you guys the process how I'm setting it up and how I'm using it. Now let me explain this. When you put a hopper on the side of a blood altar, whatever you put in here just goes in. Um, if you put an item in by hand, you can only put one at a time. But if you pump items into the blood altar, you can put a stack at a time or I think a stack is max. So 64 stones. And then I set up a item duck to extract from that and by default I put a servo in it so I don't need a lever and I also need the servo for setting up a whitelist. I'm going to explain to you why. By default this is just set to a blacklist. This is just like if I would put a lever. Well now if you put one item in here it goes in the blood altar and you didn't even see it. It was sucked out so fast again because the item duck does know hey wait until we're making slates first. So what I always do is I leave one blank slate and one reinforced slate in this blood altar. And now I'm, let's say I want to make a stack of blank slates. Then I say white list and I say blank slates. So now this item duct is not going to pull out anything from here until they turned into blank slates. And later on, I'm going to set them to reinforce slates. And then you can actually drop in a stack of stone. It's going to make blank slates out of it. Then reinforce slates and then suck them out. So let's put another stone in here. And in a second, when it turns into a blank slate, then it gets sucked out. So that is the easiest way to do this. And I just sit here, spawn villagers every once in a while. And... Um, let me actually show you guys that process also. Because you might see here, I got a lot of nice trades. I bought seven of these safari nets because one villager sold them for three emeralds. And we're going to need a bunch of them later. So we don't need to spend the gas tears to make that. I got two nice saplings I planted down here, but they haven't grown yet. Off. And I got a stack of mahogany and ebony and I bought a jukebox the hell of it so now let's say i have i put a stack in here that's gonna fill this up and then i watch a video or something and just stand here keep my eye on the blood when it runs low i check one villager right click it uh, i don't have anything i can buy and then i sacrifice that one and then i check the next one oh, there's that trade i told you guys but we have enough of these now um, so I would trade now and pretty much when you click somewhat in the same spot, of course now that didn't work. I don't know if they just shifted. Usually you can, I don't like this trade and then I kill this. Usually they stay in the same spot. Um, this is the, one of the only times this has happened. Okay. So this is how I make all the slates and reinforced slates. And I just wanted to show you guys how to do that because there isn't much you can find online and I found this system working very nicely. So I made a bunch more of the runes and replaced, there was uh, 36 runes of sacrifice and we had these four runes of augmented capacity and I placed them around instead of this cobblestone down at the tier 4 layer. But the altar is not a tier 4 yet. 
because on top of these corner pillars here we still need a large bloodstone brick on each and you need a weak blood shard to make those now to get a weak blood shard you need to kill mobs with a bound blade and then they have a chance of dropping those blood shards and in order to make that sword we need to set up our first ritual and that is the ritual of binding and then when we drop a diamond sword in the middle of that ritual it's going to turn that into a bound blade so uh, we have the materials to make the master ritual stone and the ritual stones they're already waiting in the workshop but we need to make a i don't know what you call the whatever this item right here which requires four diamonds and emerald and then these four um elemental inscription tool one is a gas tier one is a lapis lazuli block one is an obsidian block and one is a magma and i got these items on me so we're gonna make these four items now and then we're gonna combine them with those materials and then we can set up that first ritual Do, do, do. Two more. They're quite easy to make. They only take, I think, a thousand LP each to make. Yep. And the last one. And this tool you're gonna have for a while, and then later on we need to upgrade it with demonic slates and two elemental inscription tools, which is each a block of coal. So we can make higher level rituals but you also need to have a um tier four blood altar to even make these demonic slates okay so here uh, is the recipe to make this ritual thick or whatever you want to call it i don't know the actual name and this one and then we are going to make a stack of regular ritual stones and you guys see what those are used for in a minute if you have never used this mod before it's just the reinforced slate subsidian and the apprentice blood over in the middle we make a stack of this and then i'm going to make two master ritual stones one we need now and then the second one we're gonna need once we make the well of sacrifice so let's do these but we're only gonna no, we can go for that. okay and now we go over here don't look at me and we're gonna set up our first ritual there's two ways of setting up rituals one is a manual way and the other one is automated and i've never figured out what the point is of manually setting them up it's the the mod is smart enough to do it for you. so how you set up a ritual is you place the master ritual stone where you want the center of the ritual to be now they all have different sizes shapes and so on um just look on the wiki so you know how much room you need beforehand because the stones are not getting placed if there's something in the way now i know this one is going to be nine by nine so this is a nine by nine area and take this ritual stick and then you shift right click change which ritual you want to do and we're going with the ritual of binding and when you hover over this it's going to tell you you need eight blank stones four air four water four fire four earth and no dusk stones and this one the lower one of these two cannot place dusk stones you guys see that's in the second row of the tooltip but now that we have it set it doesn't cost any lp you can't do anything wrong all you do is right click on this one and now it placed the first stone again and it placed the second stone so you can just hold down the right mouse button and it's going to place them all and when there is no more particle effects now it is done so it placed all these stones for us which is really nice um now what i do that's why i put it down one layer 
is I'm going to fill up this platform here outside with uh, the sandy stone or actually infernal stone I'm going to use. And in the middle here, I'm going to put water down. And that is so when you drop an item here, you get bound. If it's um, any of the tools or the weapon, there's going to be lightning effects coming down. And it can put the floor on fire, even if it's cobble. And if your item falls into that fire, you lose it. So I found the trick that if you simply submerge this in water, you can still activate it. It still works, but you don't lose your tool that you make. Okay, so I'm going to set this up real quick, prepare it, and then we do our first ritual. So we can activate the ritual. Uh, we need to make a weak activation crystal. Got about this. And in order to make this, we need to make a lava crystal and then put it in the altar with 10,000 LP to turn it into a weak activation crystal. This is how you make it. There's two obsidian, three buckets of lava, two glass, diamond, and weak blood orb. And I already made the diamond sword, so we can take that with us. Running over here, so we can make that weak activation crystal. Put it in here and keep my eye on this and it's going to take a few seconds. Okay, there it goes. Now we got the weak activation crystal and now we can go over here. Do you guys see how I filled this inner part with water and then I placed one source block on top? don't think that one is really needed, but I think it looks cool. <laughs> so, um, I already pumped a lot of LP into the network. You guys see we have 99,522 LP in the network. And we need that because in order to activate the Ritual of Binding, I believe it costs 50,000. And how you do that is simply hold the weak activation crystal in your hand and right click that Master Ritual Stone. And now you see some red particle effects for a split second. Now, now that is activated. And now we take the diamond sword. And making sure I got a way out of here. And toss that in the middle and then back out. Because you will take damage from this lightning. I think that is so cool from this mod. Alright, and I believe that's it. So now, yeah, there it is. Go in there, and now we have the bound blade. Okay, it is, shows you it's deactivated. Okay, and in your hand, it looks like a red ball. And when I shift right click, I activate the sword. And now it's the actual sword. But now, what that does is that it constantly draws essence. Um, let's, there you go. You see it's constantly drawing essence because it's infused with your life points. So if you don't use it, I recommend just leave it deactivated so it doesn't cost you any LP. I'm going to run over to our manual mob farm and we're going to get some of those weak blood shards. Okay, let's turn this on and activate the bound blade. And it actually does really good damage. 12 by default and you can enchant it with sharpness and looting via books did we get one yet no so we're gonna have to kill a few mobs here until we get the first we only need one right now actually we need two one to make the cornerstones and then one to make the next blood orb there we go it's our first weak blood shard and i keep killing until i get a second one Give me another one. Come on. There we go. We got three. Turn this off. Let me switch to regular sword so I can kill this guy. Alright. And now I'm running back over to... Actually, no. We are gonna make the bloodstone brick first. 
and it's actually a really cool building material if you guys like the color red because all you need is one stone with one blood shard and you get 32 of those and they look pretty cool so now i'm running over there we're gonna place those on top of the corners to make this a tier four and then we make the next orb you can also make um actual brick looking bloodstone out of this and i think stairs and slabs okay so those are placed now let's check yep tier four yay and you guys also see the capacity went up to sixteen thousand. that's because of these four runes of augmented capacity and now we need the other one here and a lot of lp so i'm gonna make sure that we have a lot of this spawning right now I'm gonna wait until the first ones drop down and then we place this in here to make the next level orb there we go in there and this should drain you guys see it drain really fast the higher here items you make i think the more multiplied it gets by the speed rune so this is gonna form really quick Got enough of them. Be done any second. Okay, so now I'm once we have that done, we can finally make that sigil of the dome and go to the nether and look for the firestone. So that's our next goal. There we go. And you actually over the course of this mod. We're gonna probably make multiple of these master blood orbs because when you get into um blood alchemy and stuff you need those quite often so now i right click it it's set to us and we have still ninety one thousand. so i'm guess i was off by a zero i guess the ritual only costs five thousand to activate um i'm gonna go ahead and prepare everything for the sigil real quick and then we can head to the nether so before we can now actually go to the nether there's a couple of more things we gotta make um, but let's finish off with the sigil that we said we're gonna make first we need a teleposer a void sigil three buckets of water lava and a master blood orb um, this is how you make the void sigil six empty buckets string reinforced slate and apprentice orb we got that one and we also need to make a teleposer now this teleposition focus are already made um all that is is an ender pearl an altar and you get that teleposition focus we're gonna make more of these teleposers in one of the future episodes because it allows us to teleport items around and also ourselves so we're gonna have a lot of fun with those let's make this one and then we put it all together and now we got the sigil of the dome and it's the easiest to explain what this actually does when we're in the nether it's deactivated so it doesn't do any harm up here in the overworld okay this guy out we just put these buckets away because we don't need them anymore and i'm gonna put go away also you guys see i already took up my armor because when you handle a firestone until it is an actual refined firestone so when you have the, the actual ore or the raw firestone in your inventory or in your hand it puts everything around you on fire and you also take fire damage it's been a long time since i made one of these but if i recall right we need to make a hazmat suit to handle that and that you make by making a scuba helmet it's all very cheap to make it just takes rubber glass iron bars and an orange die and we need the chest piece the legs and rubber boots all right let's put this on derpy derp derpy derp hey i match my floor okay and the last item we need to make is if you guys look into this 
recipe how to make a raw firestone we need a rock crusher to actually process that and look up this recipe here we need is a, a multi-block structure three by two by two so if my math doesn't let go of me again we will need 12 so three sets of this uh, first we gotta make the steel and there we go so we're taking that with us to the nether including a leadstone energy cell i made and charged and one conduit and a crafting station because to actually make the refined firestone whoa We need more stuff. Wait a second. Okay, let's cut firestone. To make a cut firestone, we need to add four diamond pickaxes. And then we use that, I guess, with this here to make a refined firestone. And then we charge that up by dumping it into the lava. So let me just uh, make these four buckets with lava and these four blocks of redstone. And then we should have everything with us, and I'll meet you guys on the other side in the nether, and we go hunting down that firestone. Okay, you guys remember this place? This is where we went to the nether fortress. And I'm just gonna set up this rock crusher right here. And when all the blocks are on, this should form. There we go. Now we got a rock crusher. And I'm gonna, I don't know if I'll need the actual conduit between here, but a lot of times you do because this is an actual RF machine. So let's put this here. Output to the left. It charges, okay. But I'm gonna keep this output uh, closed right now because these Ravecraft machines suck power when even when they're not in use. And all this other stuff. I'm just gonna dump in this chest for now. So we need it. I need to take this, this. But we need this guy. All right. Now hopefully we don't get owned on our way down to the lava because we have no armor. Um, you guys can see that I built stairs down here a while ago because over here I used the turtle as a. Uh, because I wanted a lot of nether brick, uh, nether rack to make nether bricks for all the infernal. Okay, um, I guess we go down here. Ow. Way up later. Careful here. I'm pretty sure that the suit will protect us. But I don't want to risk it. I want to show you guys first of what this sigil does. Now, we have 90,000 in the network. Now, if I activate the sigil of the dome, watch the lava here. You see how it just pushes? It, it puts like a bubble around us. So, I gotta make my way down further. And it doesn't get rid of the source blocks if it's... Um, water or lava or any other fluid it simply just pushes them away so when we get out of it you see how it refills behind us again so you don't actually lose any of the liquid but this way we can run around now under the lava and just look for fire stuff so i'm gonna go ahead actually i'm gonna turn on this map f way wrong way Either. Okay. All right, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and run around here. Then you know, there's nothing gonna happen. There's not gonna be any mobs. Nothing until I find a firestone, and then I show you guys when we mine it up. Oh, look at that! Already found it. I was about to pause the recording, and there it is. That's awesome. So. I'm not mistaken, all we need is one. Just double check. 
Rusher, you make one of them, and that's all we need to actually mic this. Alright, let's run back upstairs, and I'll meet you guys there. Hey, you guys see this? It's came back in here, closed the hatch behind me, and everything starts going on fire. Let's put this in the machine. And now, if I'm not mistaken, it should stop. Hopefully. Scary. Alright, let the thing crush. By the way, underneath the lava field, there was a, a fire bat. On my way back, it attacked me. Alright, so we got this one. Now, before I take it out of the machine, let's... Oh yeah, first the four diamond picks. Right, let's take this guy out. I want to see if anything else catches on fire with this now in my inventory. Yes, it does. This is dangerous stuff. Alright, we got the cut fire stone, and if I'm not mistaken, it was like. Yes, now we got the refined fire stone. Here. Okay, and now we run back down to the lava. So I just came back down here and I turned off the sigil of the dome, so... Oh yeah, this is not gonna stop because those blocks are removed. To give you an idea, now we're down to 82,000, so I used about 8,000 of that LP running in there. And we did it quite fast, so... That wasn't too bad. Hopefully... Well, let's just drop it in here and see what happens. All you do, if I'm not mistaken, is literally drop that in the lava. And then after a second, this happens. What this lava or refined firestone now does, suck up all the lava and turn that into raw energy that it stores. And... Uh, I guess it can store 5,000 charges. And every charge is one lava source block. So this is going to keep going now all the way down as far as it can reach lava until it replaced 5,000 lava source blocks with obsidian. So this is going to take a while. But this is really nice because now after I'm done recording I'm going to come back here with the turtle and set this up to... Um, pick up a lot of this obsidian so we have a nice supply at the base. Okay, this is going to take a while and I'll be back once it's done. This actually finished much quicker than I expected. Um, I don't know if this is very deep here. Well, I guess we went down to the bottom. It was maybe, what, 10 blocks deep? That was it. So now let's pick this guy up. You guys see I made a little cubby hole here closed off so I can go AFK and not get hit by anything. There it is. We got a refined firestone. Awesome. And what this is going to come in handy now is in the next episode when we set up the... Um, the steam boiler and the steam turbines. And then this firestone is going to help us heat it up super quick within minutes. If you use charcoal to heat it up, it's it's going to take, uh, I think, at least an hour or something. Um, it's, it's very slow if you actually use the charcoal or coal. So I'm glad we got this. And next episode, we're going to turn in a few quests that we finished today. And then set up all that EU power generation and then we can finally charge the Lepatron crystal and finish that first pace of quests. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. That is it for today. And if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. That would help me out a lot. And until next episode, take care.